Today we're going to be doing some grown-up coffee science and some weird coffee science because finally I've got my hands on some liquid nitrogen, kind of as much as I want, because I'm here at Cometeer, and here at Cometeer they have a lot of liquid nitrogen. I, I think I just need to show you how much they have. They have this tank of liquid nitrogen outside of the building. This thing is huge, it's like three stories tall. It is just massive. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Cometeer, they buy delicious coffees, extract them and flash freeze them. So all you have to do is melt that back into hot water to have a delicious cup of coffee, which means they've got lots of liquid nitrogen. And so we're gonna be replicating, to start with, the experiments of Chris Hendon. Now, before we continue, there's a couple of disclosures I should make. I'm here at Cometeer because they're extracting and, and I'm gonna taste some of Square Mile's coffee to go into the capsules. And secondly, I do have an ongoing relationship with Cometeer, which means that you should absolutely treat this video as an ad. Chris Hendon wrote a paper, he was the lead author on a paper in 2015, that basically convinced everyone that grinding frozen coffee beans was better. His research showed that the colder the coffee was, the more uniform the particle size, and also the finer the coffee ground. Now, I'm not saying the science is wrong. I just want to check. I just want to repeat it. So the first thing we're going to do is, is kind of replicate that thing. But let's get into the science. For that, we need some liquid nitrogen. So what we're gonna do, and I know I look good, but what we're gonna do is take 10 grams of coffee, poach it in liquid nitrogen, and then throw it straight into the grinder. We're gonna then take some frozen coffee from the freezer, grind it at the same grind setting, and then we'll take some room temperature coffee, grind it at the same grind setting, and then we're gonna compare the grinds from each of those. So what I now have is 10 grams of room temperature coffee, freezer coffee, like domestic freezer, like minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius, and then the liquid nitrogen coffee here. Now we could brew them, but I want to go deeper. There's toys here that we can play with. So we're going to take these to a particle size analyzer and actually look at the difference between the grind distributions of these three coffees. Let's go do that. This is a laser particle analyzer, and it tracks the distribution curve of our grounds that we'll be sampling today. We load our grounds into this cell over here, and when we close this, a vacuum will suck up all the grounds into this analyzer over here, and it'll take readings and show a distribution curve on the screen over here. We have our results. Now, what Hendon's paper suggested was that the colder you make the coffee beans before grinding, the finer the grinds would be and the more uniform the particle size would be. Did we get that result? Well, kind of, actually. What was interesting to me is that the, the room temperature coffee was really very similar to the kind of domestic freezer temperature. The kind of average particle size or the kind of peak particle size went from 670 microns down to like 664, which is which is a pretty minimal change to say the least. And, and sort of surface area didn't change that much. But we did see a bigger change with the liquid nitrogen. That dropped down to 640. But when you look at the data, what you'll see is a real change in uniformity and in surface area as well. So it's definitely true. The colder you make the coffee, the finer it grinds and sort of the, the more uniform it is. So we want to do a taste test to kind of understand this whole thing a little bit more. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to brew three cups of each of the three temperatures of beans. So we'll brew a room temperature, we'll brew a freezer, and then we'll brew the liquid nitrogen chilled beans again. To match the grind settings, is tricky. And we've used the particle analyzer again to try and dial it in. So, so the difference is this. To get a matching particle size, if we grind the liquid nitrogen, frozen beans, at 6.5 on the EK, we're going to be grinding the other two at 6. So like a half step finer to try and match the same sort of peaks as that super chilled frozen coffee bean result that we get. So we've brewed the three brews. Michael's mixed them up again for me, so I don't know which is which, which is interesting. The, the room temperature and the frozen brewed pretty identically in terms of drawdown time. The liquid nitrogen brew was actually very slightly slower, but not so much slower that it couldn't have been my fault for being slightly inconsistent. There was maybe 10 seconds slower than the others. I wouldn't say it's super important or, or, or worth worrying about. I think ultimately these brewed very similarly. Can I detect a difference in taste? I may not be able to, but, but we'll see. This cup is, is like a little bit sweeter and cleaner. It's almost lighter. 
right? And that could be me having a little confirmation bias and that I think it might be the liquid nitrogen, therefore I think it might have a few less fines. I need to taste these some more. There's like a little extra harshness in these two cups that isn't as present in this one. It's kind of weird. It's a, it's a weird thing because this one tastes almost less extracted. I, I feel like actually I would want to go finer on this one, whichever it is. It doesn't taste as extracted as these two, but it tastes lighter and cleaner and kind of more, more uh, kind of linear in a way, not in a bad way, but just like less like attack on it. If I'm honest, I, I'm going to pick this as I, I think this is the most uniform particle size. Therefore, I think it's the liquid nitrogen. These two, interestingly, and I, I expected a bigger difference between the, the freezer and the room temp, but actually maybe I shouldn't if we think about the data that we had before. They were surprisingly close in terms of particle distribution and kind of peak particle size. So th these two, I think, are very similar in that way. I don't know which is which. So that's, that's my guess. I guess we try and do a reveal and find out. This is B, therefore that's the freezer one there. This one says A. Good, that's A, so that is the room temperature. So that, that kind of makes sense. And this one, I'm gonna lift it up even though I know what it says. Uh, that is the C, okay. What does this mean? Because that's ultimately the question. Why run this experiment again? What are we trying to learn? How does this apply to you? At home. I'm not saying you have to go and get a doer and get some liquid nitrogen and start freezing your coffee beans before you grind them, even though it's quite cool and, and huge fun. What I am saying is that I had previously been not a huge lover of grinding from frozen, but I, I think I've had that opinion challenged quite heavily here. I, I think there's no real downside to grinding from frozen. Uh, you know, I, we didn't see a big difference in particle distribution. I don't see a big difference in taste when you brew them. Uh, and that means if you like to freeze coffee to keep it long term, because freezers are super helpful for that, then you don't have to worry about defrosting or that kind of stuff. You know, I think there can be differences that are more pronounced with something like espresso, where small, small variances in particle size manifest in flow rate quite, quite you know, notably. But for brewed coffee, I, I think grinding from frozen is definitely okay. It's definitely a good thing. Uh, and I think the liquid nitrogen is just cool. And uh, I kind of want to brew that again a little finer. But, but that's, that's the learning here. The paper was right, I, I agree. We've, we've replicated the, the Chris Hendon's work. That's what we got, uh, and, and we learned a thing. I'm very grateful for Cometeer for hosting me here and indulging me in my ridiculousness. If you want to check out what they're doing, there's a link in the description down below. It's not an affiliate link, but you should totally treat it like an affiliate link. Uh, you can check it out if you want to. But now I want to hear from you. Have you done an experiment like this? Have you tried to do a side-by-side -side with your freezing coffee or brewing at room temperature? Did this go as you expected? Have you seen anyone else kind of replicate this sort of stuff with the liquid nitrogen? But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.